What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we're talking about what do narcissists look for in a partner, a significant other? What do they look for? If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. Boom. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. What is important to a narcissist? What do they look for in a partner or significant other? Y'all know this video. Like I said, oh my goodness. I don't, y'all, I love doing these videos. I love doing them because it's, they're thought provoking, not only for me, but for other people as well. It helps bring y'all clarity and whatnot as well. Um, but yeah, so what is important to a narcissist when searching for a significant other, when looking for a partner? Yeah, so it really depends on that narcissist. It really depends on that narcissistic person because I'm pretty sure, I'm almost certain that everybody watching this video is going to be coming from a different situation. Yeah, everybody, people can come from similar situations, but everybody's situation is going to be unique within themselves. Like, you know, your availability could matter to a narcissist. So I, what I'm searching for is a partner that doesn't have a lot of availability, right? A partner that doesn't have a lot of free time so I can go do what I want to do. You know, that I don't feel like I have to dedicate so much time to them. So this is one of the reasons why a lot of narcissists could um, pursue single parents. You know, single parents that the other parent is out of the picture or just barely ever helps out and things like that. Or every other weekend type stuff. They love that because I only have to dedicate a certain amount of a certain amount of time for you. So they could look for people that are available under a certain amount of time, a certain window of time, so to speak. You know, you only have a certain amount of time free for us to converse, for us to see each other, for us to talk and whatnot, for us to, you know, do what we do, do what we do. The, the, the clapping of the cheeks, perhaps, perhaps, maybe not a guarantee, but perhaps, you know, <laughs> because that's important to some narcissistic people like Every narcissist is going to be a different person. I know the traits are going to be similar, but how they are expressed is going to be different. You know, their socioeconomic status is going to be different. Their level of education is going to be different. Their financial status is going to be different. So what they are searching for in a partner, what is important to them is going to be different. It's going to be dependent upon that narcissistic person, right? They can be looking for somebody that's also like, when I say partner or what are they looking for in a significant other or partner or relationship? Yeah, I don't mean a serious committed relationship. This could be enough. They could be looking for an, a, an affair partner. You see, somebody to cheat with. So if they are married, they might also be looking for a married affair partner because we both have something to lose there. You know, you both have something to lose. You don't have any control over me and things of that nature. So they could be looking for somebody that's also married. You know, like your availability does matter. Your relate your relationship status does matter to them. It could be very important to them. You know, so if y'all don't know, I have a mini course where I go over a lot of this stuff in detail. It's called Understanding the Seven Stages of a Narcissistic Relationship. The link is in the description of every video and podcast that I do. It goes into the detail of why you were picked, why you were chosen and things like that. Check the links in the bio. But yeah, this could be super important to them, y'all. That's why, I tell, that's why I tell people, when you're dealing with a narcissistic person, when you're trying to get out of it, like, how do I get them to leave me alone? Figure out what's important to them. Figure out why you were here with them. Figure out what, ty- what type of supply did they get from you? Because the type of supply is important. If you got a broke, bum-ass, narcissistic partner, right? They could be looking for somebody that has money. They could be looking for somebody that can, can take care of them and whatnot, that they can bum off of, that they can mooch off of, that they can, you know... They, they they can be taken care of and what they have nothing to offer, but you know, but love, affection, and being here for you. And this right here, I know people start start thinking gender is irrelevant here because there are some bum narcissistic males and bum narcissistic females. There, I'm pretty sure there's some bum narcissistic non-binary folks too. You know what I mean? Y'all, you, y'all not exempt. You know, you see what I'm saying? Your gender. Your sexuality does not matter here. You could be a bum. Bum bums come in all creeds, races, religions. You know, there could be some. You know, I know some Muslim bums. You know I me, mean? um, but yeah. <laughs> but that's how it goes, though. They could be looking for somebody that has good financial standing, right? Your financial standing could be absolutely important for them, so they could seek out people who have equal or more or greater 
financial standing. But that's also kind of crazy as well, because if you have greater financial standing than them, they can also make them jealous of you. You see, they can hate that they have to get money from you. They can hate that you are in control of the money or they have to ask for money or something like that. They can absolutely hate that right there. So they can, be, they, they can also drive them away. The same thing that attracts them to you can also simultaneously push them away from you because it happens. The same thing that, that, that makes them attracted to you, the same thing that is important to them can make them hate you later on. It's crazy how that works. Like your financial status, like you are rich or popular or something like that. You have money. You have a lot of disposable income and they have very, they have very none, very little or none. They can hate you for that. They can be, become jealous of you because, oh, you are serious. Yeah, you got a silver spoon. You like you, you got the only reason you have money is because your parents, whatever the situation is. So they can hate on you. The only reason you have this job because of nepotism or whatever it is, you know, because you 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 got on your knees to get the job, whatever it is, they make you feel bad about it. Yeah, because they are insecure about their financial standing. So they try to project that onto you. So your financial standing could absolutely be important to them, y'all. It really, really could. It really, really can. Like another thing that could be important to narcissists that are looking for in a significant other is your education level or your ability to handle a conversation, have a, an educated conversation, right? It could absolutely be your education, like how smart you are, how smart you talk, you know, because you can just talk smart and whatnot. And that could be enough for them. Like as long as you like say you can be smart. They like some narcissists like smart people. They like educated people. So your level of education, because they themselves might also be educated or, 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 or they could just feel like that they're entitled to having a smart, educated partner because they feel like even with no education, even with no book smarts, even with no street smarts, they might feel like that they, they might feel like they are the smartest person in the room. So they feel like they deserve a smart person. So your education status, your level of education, could also be important to them where you went to school at and things of that nature. But again, Again, y'all know I'm going to say again, because the same thing that draws them to you can push them away from you, can make them hate you because you might you might be more educated than them. They might only have a high school diploma and you have an associate's degree and they hate you for that. You have a bachelor's degree. They hate you for that. You have a master's or Ph.D. or whatever. You are double Ph.D., whatever. They can hate you for that same exact thing. The same thing that pulls you in, the same thing that, that attracts repels. You know, it's crazy how that works because they might love an educated person, but they also simultaneously hate you for it because they become jealous of it because now they're in, they feel like they're in competition with you. The same, the, the, the same type of thing with the money, the financial incentive, they can feel like they're in constant competition with you and whatnot because they feel insecure around you because they, you make them feel less than because of this situation, because of your education, for, because of your financial standing, you make them feel like they are less than you. Even though you haven't, you haven't done anything different, you don't make them, you don't go out of your way to make them feel like less than. They just feel that way. There's nothing you do to make them feel like they are less than. They just feel that way naturally. It's like a natural less than. You see, a natural less than or equal to symbol and whatnot, because that happens quite a bit as well. So that's why I'm just telling people, you in these situations, you have to empower yourself. Like if you, if that's what they get from you, like your smarts attract them, the same thing. Looks, looks can be also be important to a narcissist as well. Your looks, your level of attractiveness. I know y'all knew, I, I can't skip the looks. Looks are not always super important to narcissists. Let's go ahead and say that, y'all. Looks are not always super important. And this, when I say that, y'all, this is not uh, this is not a free-for-all for people to hop in the comment section and be like, well, oh, Court, the looks definitely don't matter because they left me for somebody that looks like this. They left me for a whale. They left me for whatever it is. Y'all don't have to disrespect the nut. Now, if the, if the new supply knew about you, we can we can we can, we can let it slide a little bit, but if they didn't know they were the kind of a bystander in the situation, they didn't know they get they got lied to too. Yeah, you, know, you gotta you gotta diss them. You gotta diss them. Now, like I said, understand? I understand. If they knew you were around, this away. I'll I'll allow it. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. <laughs> objection will be look sustained. Your objection will be sustained. They're like sustained. You know, <laughs> objectionly, they knew about me. Sustained, you know. Okay, you did this, this away. Um, but yeah, looks are not always super important to them. But your level of attractiveness could attract a narcissistic person. It could be super important to them because they feel like they deserve a good-looking person, a conventionally attractive person, right? Even if they themselves are not conventionally attractive, they are conventionally attractive. They're going to be trying to be prettier than you, male, female, non-binary, wh you know, whatever you identify as. They 
will try to compete with you. It doesn't really matter. Like there, you, you are, um, you are their competition and whatnot. You really, really are. So they're going to compete with you. Your looks might attract them, but it also makes them jealous. You see how you, y'all see a pattern for me here. The same thing that is important to them at first, the same thing that they look for in a partner, a significant other, they, they end up hating later on because it makes them feel insecure. It makes them feel a certain type of way. Your level of attractiveness could be pushing that narcissistic person away. It could draw them in, but it pushes them away at the same time. You know, this happens right there, y'all. That really does. That really can happen in this space. The same thing that draws them to you can absolutely push them away. Like looks are not always super important, but sometimes they are. It really depends on that narcissist, right? They have their certain standards or whatever and whatnot. So that, that can happen too, y'all. And another, another thing, y'all, another thing that could tra- attract the narcissist, that could be important to them. And y'all can't guess what I'm going to say. You didn't, you couldn't guess it, could you? Your level of vulnerability. Yep. 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 You being vulnerable could be important to them. Because they will, in your level of empathy, your level of empathy and your level of vulnerability, that could be important to them. No, not all narcissists are attracted to high levels of empathy. That's not, I just don't believe that. Um, but the ones that are, it's in, it's super important to them that you have a high level of empathy. It's important to them that you have a high level of vulnerability so they can weaponize that against you. It's important to them. They look for that, that type of stuff right there so they can get away with stuff because they can turn your empathy against you. I thought you were a kind person. I thought you were a forgiving person, but I guess I was wrong, right? To hell with me, right? I, I thought you were a kind, caring, empathetic person, but to hell with me, right? Guess you're not. Guess I was wrong, right? You see? There's a distinct possibility right there of how that happens, how that goes. So I'm telling you, like, your vulnerability could attract them. And I, I don't know, like, your vulnerability might not repel them later on, but your empathy like I said, it could be a, a deciding factor of whether or not they pursue you. Because that's that could be super important to them. You know? It really, really could. And then, then the last thing I'll talk about today, y'all, is that could attract to them, that could be important to them, is your family, is your support group. I'll say that. Your support group. Now, this could go either way. Your, your good support group could attract them. Or your lack of support group, your lack of friends and family could also attract them. It really depends on the narcissist. Some narcissists like for you to have a good support group, a good support system, so they can get kind of integrated into your life. Because that's what they, they might lack that. But if they get into a relationship space with you, it's kind of like prepackaged. You know, it's like I got a prepackaged group of friends and family now because me and you are together. But the also the opposite could be true for a narcissist as well, where they hate the fact that you have friends and family. You know. They hate the fact that you have friends and family. They hate, but uh, some of them could love the fact that you don't have friends and family because that means they can, the isolation is easy because you don't have friends and family. I do, but you don't. So the isolating factors can be easy as hell to, to you know, to do right here. So there's something to think about, y'all. There's really a, really a lot. I gave y'all a lot to think about. Then I'm like, damn, you, you, over, you overloaded us with info today. That's what I'm here for, y'all. I'm, a, I'm an information overloader. That's why I'm here to overload y'all with information and hope this helps y'all in some way. Shape or form, again, check out my support. Check, check out my mini course, understand, Understanding the Seven Stages of a Narcissistic Relationship. Um, also, I have a private support group, you know, a private support group where people, we, we have weekly meetings and whatnot. Um, this is a private support group. It's called The Mental Healers. The link is in the description as well. Make sure y'all like and subscribe to this channel. Like, leave a comment, like, subscribe. And thank y'all so much. Mental Healers is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental illness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos in my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.